Hi lovely and welcome. Today I'd like to invite you to join me in my witch's kitchen, sit by cozy candlelight and feel the gentle warmth of the hearth fire on your back while I prepare some enchanted treats and sweets for the winter solstice celebration, making this room smell sweet with honey and spices. So sit down, have a delicious cup of hot chocolate, enriched with warming ginger, fragrant cardamom, a pinch of cinnamon and my secret ingredient for comfort stirred in as I tell you a story as old as time. When the world was still laying in darkness and humans lived simpler lives, there once were two sisters, beautiful as day and night. They loved each other dearly, but couldn't have been more different. One was called the Lady of the Frost. She had a heart as cold as the snow, steel grey eyes like a frozen lake under a stormy winter sky, and a thin bony frame of a tree stripped bare in the wind. The other sister was known as the Mistress of Flames, a head full of wild hair the color of a solstice sunrise, with eyes the warm auburn of desert dust. She was said to be able to scorch everything she brushed with her fingers. Both sisters were devoted serving daughters to their mother Earth, dancing around her in a never-ending roundelay to weave the circle of life and death. When they danced far apart, they felt as queens reigning over their kingdom with absolutism, but twice in the cycle of the year, they would meet in the sky as friends and equals for the equinox celebrations. Back then the humans were much more observant of Mother Earth than we are today and they were well aware of the dance the two sisters performed. After all, they had learned about it from their fathers, which in turn had learned this from their fathers and so they would also teach their young about the time old dance of fire and ice. On freezing winter nights, the people would huddle around the last glimmering embers in the hearth and warn their children to listen to the sounds ahead. The howling of the wind that rattled on doors and blew through the cracks between the slates. A sign that Lady Frost was riding through the air followed by her ledger of wild spirits driving the hungry wolves closer to the towns. With round eyes the children would listen to the stories of her unforgiving, hard-hearted nature, how she would steal lives from animals, leaving them frozen stiff in the snow, how she would starve entire villages and bring a never-ending darkness to the world. On those cold winter nights, shivering in their cottages, the people would then tell stories of the Mistress of Flames, reminding each other of the joyful times when she danced over their land, when the fields were laden with golden crops, the meadows were green with luscious herbs and the air was sweet with the scent of wild honey. They would reminisce about how they would sing and dance alongside her, weaving crowns of wildflowers on long evenings spent down at the river. And the Lady of the Frost, wandering through the towns, her white soft cloak dragging behind her, would hear those stories. And she felt a sadness come over her, that the people didn't seem to notice the beautiful flowers of frost she painted on windows and the intricate, fragile ornaments of ice she hung from trees and roofs. Feeling so misunderstood and lonely, she wandered into the bleak winter forest 
between the white trunks of the young birch trees in search of her sister, the Mistress of Flame, who wildly and impetuously had set the sky on fire with a slow rising sun. Her bright red turned a pale frosty forest a mild orange and with the help of her sister's sparkling ice crystals showed the way. The closer they got, the thicker the morning fog became until they finally came face to face. Full of impulsive joy, the mistress of flames embraced her sister, warming her frozen heart. Defying the heat, a lady of frost returned her sister's affection with quiet constancy. And so, as every year they met on the vernal equinox, before they would dance on. The people loathe me. They don't want my glittering snow and they don't appreciate the beauty of the merry dances I sent over the northern skies. They see me as evil and unnecessary, the Lady of Frost complained to her sister. They don't want me dancing over the fields they live on. With a spark of a twinkle in her eyes, the Mistress of Flames replied, you must understand, sister, that the humans walking this earth right now are indeed children of the fire. Or so they think. They naturally strive for life because they cannot see the necessity in death yet, until they themselves have reunited with Mother Earth. They have learned to tame some of the fire and use it to bring life and comfort. But I know you, dear sister. I see that your beautiful dance slays the world to sleep and grants her rest, recovery and nourishment. Walking carefully over icy fields, you bring frost to the little seeds, slumbering in Mother Earth's embrace, so they will start to grow and bloom when you leave. Bodies that have served their purpose and are too weak to carry on. You release and transform into a shape from which they can give new life and nourishment for the never-ending cycle. Without the water you send down to the plains with the snow melting in the mountains, I wouldn't be able to let my warmth grow plants and life. When I am dancing over the lands, the people tell pretty stories about the time you made the world dark, brought them together around the fires and had them lay down their daily hard work. Yes, they are grateful for the harvest I bring, but they equally fear my fires that transform their forests into fertile ashes. They complain about the long days and physical labor the overwhelm of tasks I bless them with through my dance. Humans are difficult creatures who are living cycle through cycle, but never are content with where they are in the moment. But let's not bother ourselves with their sorrows, but enjoy our merry dance. And when you dance on, remember the laughter of children when they walk over frozen lakes and see the glittering white of an untouched field of snow. When they build little people out of your soft coat and cry when they melt. Your dance is just as important as mine to keep life moving. And Lady of the Frost gave her passionate sister a chilly kiss on her hot cheek and as their hands parted, they both danced on until they were as far apart as they would go. The Lady of the Frost twirled between the soft flurries of a snowy cloud in the winter sky as she heard the sound of rhythmic drumming underneath. The people of the village were busy building big fires to beckon her sister to come back. She smiled to the horizon where she could see the streaks of orange and pink, the dress of the mistress of flames flickering through the trees and whispered, 
My work here has been done with love and care, dear sister. It's time for you to come back. Well, I hope you warmed up and I do see a little smile on your lips, so I do take it you enjoyed my magical potion. Now I wish you safe travels back to your world and a blessed winter solstice or Yule. And should you seek more wisdom, cozy witchery and magic for in between the years, have a look at my website and the upcoming Solitary Witch online workshop to guide you through the 12th tide or Raunechte, as we call it, where I'm from. Come and see me again soon. You're always welcome here.